Okay, so a problem that I've been trying to figure out is how do we use an MCP server that is the streaming HTTP, but also how can we use MCP without installing like a something in a Docker container? So like for example, the context seven uh, MCP, if, if you want to use that, my understanding is you would have to install like this server component, right? You've, you've got to run that on the device where you're running N18 or where you want to call on the MCP. Now, that's okay if it's local on your machine and you're running like Docker desktop or something, you can do all that. And just, you know, if you're using Roo code or whatever, you can install that stuff on the computer, that's all fine. However, if you're doing things on a server, then that starts to become a problem because you also then have to secure all those containers or you know, make it all so you're accessing it without being accessed by people that shouldn't be. And so I <clears throat> uh, was having a look at Smithery. I haven't used this for a little while, but it seems like it's come along really in a quite interesting way, which is now you can get a URL of the MCP server as streamable HTTP you get an API key from Smithery and then you can access it without having to install the server. So I guess it's running on their own GitHub or something. I'm not quite sure about that part, but anyway, so what that means, and this seems like a really edge case, but actually it's really important. So for example, if I want to have a workflow in uh, N18 and I want to access the context seven MCP, so the normal way that you would give an agent an MCP tool in N8N is to use the built-in MCP client. Now the problem is it only accepts the SSE endpoint and that is not any use to us if we want to use the streaming on context 7. So we can't use that. But what we can do is use this community node and this community node, which is the one by um, nerding-io, the NIN nodes MCP, is excellent. And because if we add the variable of NIN community packages allow tool usage to be true, so in my Coolify server or like in Docker, it'd be like it's a variable that you add in to the Docker container, right? And so so now that variable switches on this capability for NAN to use the community node as an agent tool. And why is that important? Well, the reason is because it can accept the standard IO, the server side events and HTTP streamable, which means we can put in the streamable URL from Smithery. Now I'm not going to put that on the screen because it'll have my API key in it. But once you add that, then you've got that as a credential. The options now you have, you know, open up quite a bit. And and so if you, you have a look here, we've got the, um, the tool call for get library docs on MCP on, on the context seven. And we have the tool for resolving the library ID. And the way the context seven MCP works is you have to um, fetch the library ID. If, if you knew it, you could, you could skip this step, I suppose, but if we're asking the agent to work out what the library ID is and the return it gets back from context seven is a trust score based on all of the available matching contexts or pack sort of like bundles of context I guess they are and so then your agent can decide which one it's going to use so it gets back this um, quite you know in this case I use Tailwind so it gets back a fair bit of detail of all the ones that match Tailwind and because there's more than one so you know there's a few there it can pick up on and so then it sends back the correct or the one that it wants to the um, 
sense, uh, sends this one here. So it's picked out slash tailwind labs slash tailwind css.com. So it's decided that is the like dominant one for the question that I gave it. And then it can send its topic to the context seven MCP to find out like what's the answer to the question. Okay, so, so they're all the moving parts. And so what, what that means is if I uh, come into the, the chat agent, or, you know, you could trigger this in some other way, but just for the sake of this. So um, how, and, oh, and I've given the agent uh, a pretty a clear directive to use the context seven library because um, otherwise it might just try and answer it itself because it's in Gemini, it has a fair bit of knowledge about Tailwind. So we want to kind of force it to go and get the information from the context seven uh, MCP. So we'll just save that. And and those prompts, so I've just made that up in uh, AI Studio by giving it some screenshots uh, and, and the layout. And you know I want the tool description and the description of the uh, tool call. All right, so if we say now, how uh, do I scale uh, columns in Tailwind. Okay, so we can see we've prompted the agent and now it's gone to resolve the library. And then it's gone to the um, fetching the details and then the output should appear any moment now. And you can see it's, so it's searched for, like just go back here, so yeah, there's the answer. So it's searched for Tailwind CSS and Oh, sorry. Yeah, so like it search for Tailwind CSS and then it called tailwindcss.com with a topic of scale columns. <clears throat> and then you can see now this is the this is the answer. All right? And it and it's better than you probably would get. Well, I mean Gemini could probably do this if you wanted it to, but it means you can use a lot less uh, cost and less technical AI agent to get the answer because all it's doing is having to understand how to fetch and understand the user input. So it doesn't need to know anything about Tailwind really to do this output. And because the output from the Context 7 library is, you know, it's all nicely formatted, it's in Markdown, all that kind of stuff, right? So you can see we've got this quite fantastic answer here. It's, it's plenty detailed. And if you fed that back into a, a AI developer agent, now it would have the precise documentation as fetched from context seven to carry out its duty. Now, and context seven has, uh, you know, there's like there's thousands of um, framework libraries and stuff on there now. So uh, basically you could have a sort of all purpose agent that uh, another input, like another agent or another MCP, I guess, could act to fetch information about a framework to then, you know, pile that back into your main context so um, yeah look the, the key thing here though like being able to use the um, smithery remote um, URL like to, to that streamable stuff means that like because there's I don't know hundreds of MCP servers now so you can then access all this sort of stuff that otherwise you would have to go and install things for like you, you know whether it's perplexity or brave search or duck go or Tavoli, that, that all becomes possible without having to install the MCP was like server slash host on the device. Fantastic. So yeah, I haven't couldn't really find anything obvious about how to do that, but it makes things a lot easier and, and it means that, you know integrating MCPs into other tools like anything LLM or LibreChat. Um, should be a lot easier too, I think, although I haven't tried that yet. So yeah, thanks.